guys, psst, guys, hey, hey, guys, psst, have you heard, guys, psst, hey, guys, 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 psst, hey, hey, did you have this navy is here? And you know what that means? <gasps> I shouldn't really be laughing at that intro, but I have not stopped. Hello, welcome back to War Thunder. I'm Ash, and, uh, well, you know, I, I play this game a little too often, and when grinding, I tend to see some pretty interesting things. I'm playing it with a bunch of squad mates here. It's, you know, a few hours after my uh, 10k celebration stream, which have you, if, if you missed it, oh well. There's probably going to be a video out on that soon. But notice that that friendly KO-43 has just decided to shoot down that friendly aircraft for no apparent reason. So you know what we're going to do? We're not going to shoot him down. We're just going to sort of sit on his six and see what happens. I'm not really going to go shoot him at all because that would be provoking uh, the bear. But you know what? It, it's quite fun just to see... Uh, what the reactionary thing of someone will do if you just sort of fly around like this. And it's clear that after one or two attempts here, he is quite hostile. Uh, obviously he's just Team Guild friendly, but uh, you know, I'm just playing around. I've had several matches today playing as the Japanese, and they've been utter, utter garbage. Uh, this was the first of uh, many, many matches to come, but most of them ended in the same way. Either someone crashing, someone, you know getting team killed or half the team dying in three minutes and the Japanese have a really bad reputation for such and it's quite unfortunate because I really do enjoy Japanese aircraft as I'm pulling around here I tend to lose all of my energy this guy's got me on the corner I'm trying to pull up just to see what he continues to do unfortunately I reverse my uh, gradient and start to pull up I'm gonna bank right over and pull back but he's already got guns on me and he decides to blast me out of the sky fortunately he's killed a second friendly which means he's been uh, kicked out of the match now this clip here is from later uh, again shooting a p51 and a friendly in amongst the fur ball of friendly and enemy aircraft has shoulder shot me and basically shot through me and shot me down this wouldn't have been a problem if he had have said sorry uh, because I do actually manage to well partially control the vehicle and send it back to the airfield however I land too hard and as a result splosh but anyway that's not what today's video is about uh, you know it's unfortunate these things happen but I suppose that's just Japanese in a nutshell Today's video is not actually going to be about that, although that's kind of the side point that I wanted to mention anyway. This is an Australian Beaufort bomber. Now, it's not just Australian, but it's in Australian camouflage. It's actually a British uh, aircraft. But uh, in the current sound mod, if you're wondering why, this cockpit sounds, but there's no actual engine sounds for this particular aircraft. Oh well, there seems to be several mods like that, but there is gun sounds, thankfully. So, uh, myself and Ozzy are going to have some fun in a bomber. Something that you don't really... I wouldn't say you wouldn't have fun in a bomber. Anyway, we're just putting a bunch of shells off in this direction, hoping to get a hit. Anyway, I flick between the camera quite a lot here. In fact, I don't even know what's going on at this point. Anyway, we've reached the bombing point. Bombs open. And we're just going to drop the bombs. There, the bombs are gone, and we have spotted an AR-2. Ozzy and I are going to go engage with that particular bomber. It's a fantastic thing, uh, this aircraft. It used to be able to do, uh, I believe, 800 kilometers in a dive. They've updated the flight model, it no longer can do that. It's kind of sad because it feels like it's been suppressed in terms of engine power. This bomber was actually one of Australia's fastest aircraft out at the outbreak of World War I. <laughs> World War I. At the outbreak of World War II. And uh, anyway, we've got base damage on that particular base, but we didn't have enough to quite take it out. We got two thirds of the way there. We just got one third left. Anyway, we're not catching this uh, particular guy, but you know, oh, and he's starting to put shots into me. Yeah, that's not good. That's going to prove to be a pain, but we're not actually catching this guy at all. So it just seems like the engine power is not quite cut up to the job as I nearly ram Aussie. Oh dear. That's not really a problem considering we're just going to jump on the guns and see if we can get a hit off at him with our 400 gun targeting distance. I don't think I'm aiming up quite high enough. Anyway, we're going to pull off that target. We're going to go find something else to shoot. However, as we're pulling around, a Japanese sneaky dive bomber comes in for the attack from above. Now that thing is a single engine dive bomber. 
It's not exactly the most armed either. It's got two, or maybe one, 7.7. And, uh, well, this thing is armed with 250 caliber machine guns and two forward firing 7.7mm uh, machine guns. You know, my gun targeting distance is quite low, as with the previous match I was playing a bunch of fighters. However, we do get a good hit on his engine, and he turns around and, well, decides that he's had enough of fighting me, and is going to go after that Donny 217 down below. Anyway, we're just going to sort of think about things here, and uh, I'm just looking where the base is, and of course I aim directly towards it when this same thing just kicks in in my brain. Hang on, that D4Y is continuing on an attack path towards the bomber and I'm not going to have any of that so we're going to go on the hunt anyway we're going to dive in and I do remember the days when this thing could do 800 kilometers an hour in a dive anyway we're going to form in on this guy six we're going to use the AI gunners predominantly uh, to try and uh, for five we're going to do a quick early on uh, bit of shooting before we have to take uh, control of the aircraft again anyway open, engage the web just double check our six. Put another couple of shots into him. Of course, in comes the friendly to try and shoot him down. That doesn't work too well. So we're just going to slot in on this uh, D4Y2's six. Just sort of have a bit of a gunshipping fun uh, in this regard. He does catch our fuel, and our fuel is leaking. And for some reason, I'm not hitting him here at all. I'm trying to get the 50 cal on him. And Aussie is just lighting him up from the rear. And the same with that Donny 217. There are just bullets flying everywhere. I get some good hits with the 50 cals and get a supporting fire times one. Anyway, time to land back on the base. As I'm shooting up Aussie and, uh, you know, just being a bit of a cheeky uh, little bastard, you know, I'm shooting away and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Aussie goes, ah, and then shoots down a Corsair. <laughs> Random moment. Anyway, we take off again and we're airborne. We've all repaired and gotten over the shock of having our airfield assaulted by uh, two enemy fighters. And we're just, you know, hanging out and, you know, just chilling about, you know, and, and talking about this particular aircraft as a whole. And all of a sudden, off my left wing, I spot a Spitfire. I to open the bomb bay and dump all the bombs for extra maneuverability. Let's go and engage this particular Spitfire. Now, not advisable to go head on with a Spitfire, especially when you've only got less guns than him. But you know what? You risk it, you take, you take that risk. We're going to turn around, but we're not that maneuverable. And realizing this, I decide to turn towards the airfield. Now, the guns aren't quite there. I'm going to put a couple of hits into him, maybe, if we can get guns on target. You know, just zoom in a little bit, catch him on fire, and then wablamo, pilot snipe him. That seems to work. Now we're critically damaged, and we've got about four kilometers to travel on very, very dead engines. But that's not all. There's a car 44 on Aussie's six and of course he's maneuvering around but I realizing that I'm out of power just sort of need to get on the guns and just sort of shoot him just a little bit of course failing to do so results in me just sort of looking like an idiot like I am here and uh, you're not going to get shots in on that range not <laughs> especially with like 250 gun targeting distance you're never going to hit a target like that Although this thing is very capable, uh, it's not exactly the greatest aircraft to do such in. I'm just sort of here uh, suppressing fire and giving support to Aussie, who is having a ball of a time trying to shoot him down, as you can see up there. But my engines are absolutely cooked. You know, I'm leaking oil, I'm leaking fuel, the engines are overheating. Realising this, I'm just going to continue straight on. Obviously, uh, I'm low to the ground, I don't have a lot of altitude, and my left engine has just carked it. Me thinking ahead, I'm going to aim for the nearest clearing, and then sort of taxi in towards the runway. Hopefully that will give me enough sort of runway space, and here comes uh, the same KI-44. Doesn't realise that I'm below him, everything is taking off, this is just an absolute shit show. We put a few hits into him, continue uh, firing away, get a critical hit, and then I get another pilot snipe. <laughs> and get Bomber Rescuer. Anyway, it's time to put wheels down, at which point the game ends. Anyway, to the results screen. So, a decent result uh, for a match that didn't go on too long. It was 20 minutes, but uh, it was definitely a bunch of fun. And who says you can't have fun playing an Australian aircraft? Anyway, lads, thank you very much for 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. 
uh, I'll update you as it goes. Stay tuned, there'll be a highlight video from my last stream. Anyway, my name's Ash, and I'll catch you in the next one.